Hello Channel Need viewers, I am DS, your psychologist and welcome to another episode on Channel Need. So this is another viewer request episode. One viewer asked us this question. How are ENTJs like as bosses? So this is a very good question. In order for us to answer this question, we will split this video into three portions. First, let's talk about ENTJ as premier bosses. What do I mean by that? ENTJs as prime ministers or presidents. In the 20th and 21st centuries. So in the history of mankind, there has been a few ENTJ presidents or prime ministers. So Lee Kuan Yew and Margaret Thatcher are typical iconic examples. I must say I take great exception when you... And for that record, Donald Trump is not an ENTJ. He is an ESTP. So do not be mistaken, not everybody who is tyrannic, bossy, is an ENTJ. ENTJ and ESTPs, different class. <laughs> so as the leader of a country, the ultimate boss, the ENTJ can be described as high-handed. When someone is described as high-handed, they have no regard for the feelings of others. They are overbearing. Their way is the only way. There isn't even my way or the highway. It's my way. As a leader of the country, the ENTJ is very goal-driven. And usually, the ENTJ has only a few goals. First, it could be nation building, unification of the country, or preservation or defending national rights. In order to do this, the ENTJ realizes or knows very clearly that individualism must be sacrificed. Freedom must be sacrificed. There will be a lot of rioters, they must be sacrificed as well. Especially when a country is in its infancy stage, the ENTJ is particularly concerned about bringing the country up. Of course, during this time, there will be a lot of troublemakers. So these troublemakers must be thrown in jail. And if need be, they must be killed. So what do I mean by that? If there are protesters, let them go ahead. We send a tanker. If you just want to come into the way of the tanker and get crushed and run down, you die. That's your business because you choose to do so. So this is how high-handed an ENTJ is. So personally, I feel that if an ENTJ ever rise to that premium position, they can be like that. Very high. But of course, you're now living in a more civilized era, so you can hear an ENTJ leader says, okay, if you're not pleased with this country, you are free to leave. <laughs> okay, generally, most of the ENTJs don't rise to the top position, right? But they might end up in a very respectable position. So who are some of the ENTJ leaders that we know very well of? One would be Steve Jobs. Not turn on. Here. So Steve Jobs' lives have been covered in many movies. In those movies, you find him always ranting at his employees. What, are you gonna, are you gonna fire me? No! I already fired you! There are a lot of tantrum fits. So Gordon Ramsay has also been known as a textbook ENTJ because he rants at others. So it is true, in general, that ENTJ as a boss is very demanding. The healthy ENTJ does not rant and yell at his employees because there is no need to. So how does a healthy ENTJ look like? <laughs> Actually, you might find it also very unhealthy. So a very good example that I have would be Meryl Streep in The Devil Wears Prada. Hey, tell Simone I'm not going to prove that girl that she sent me. So some people may call her mean. So at that level, the ENTJ at the top level of any organization would be described using the word unapologetic. So they have already earned that position. They know what it deserves. So the ENTJ has risen to that position not by chance. They know what it takes to get the business going, to get the business running. So they should have very high demands on their employees, right? That's all. Right. So as an ENTJ myself, I can totally identify with all the characters that I have actually discussed. As an ENTJ boss myself, I would describe myself as a person that is rather difficult to work with. <laughs> That's true. But I would say that I am demanding, but not unreasonable. 
usually I expect the employee or the person that I'm engaging to be able to deliver what they were paid for. The good news is, as long as you continue to deliver, I will continue to engage you. However, there is one downside if you have an ENTJ boss. It is a very rare occasion that I praise someone. So, as explained, the ENTJ is really harsh on themselves and equally harsh on others. So as an employee of an ENTJ, it sometimes can be very draining because you don't get the acknowledgement that other bosses might give you. However, the ENTJ is usually willing to pay you handsomely if you do your job well. So for my case, I usually pay people to do things that I can't do above the market rate. But if they don't deliver, I will ask them. So talking about which, I am going to introduce one word that many ENTJs might identify with and that is Anvil. A-N-B-I-L. So what's so special about this word? So A-N in Anvil comes from the word angel. So the ENTJ starts off as an angel. Trusting that you will do your due diligence, trusting that you will do your job, we give you the benefit of the doubt. However, after two tries, that's why A-N, right? Two tries. You do not deliver, then the devil comes in. That is why you see the V-I-L. <laughs> Girl, you're my angel. You're my darling. This is when we become very demanding. But enough said, we do give you chances to prove your worth. The ENTJ is really hard to please and can be very easily irritated. So I can't stand staff that keeps asking questions. How do you do this? How do you do that? I engage you because I want you to do things that I don't want to do. So I expect the employee to be able to learn very fast. So I expect the employee to be able to do things very fast. I pay you above the market rate so you jolly well learn on your own. So personally, I do feel most irritated when someone does not do their due diligence. So if you come and apply for a job at my company, at least you should know what we do. You should do your background research. So if you come in for an interview without even knowing what we do, then you are very unlikely, unlikely, unlikely to be even engaged. Even though SI is the blind spot for the ENTJ, the ENTJ boss can be really careful when employing. So when I employ, I am quite careful. I do not want to employ a person. Immediately, I need to observe. Why? Because of bad experiences, probably. Now, the difference between the ENTJ and the ESTJ is that the ENTJ uses NI. So NI has this future orientation, this visionary orientation. So as an ENTJ boss, sometimes I convey this future orientation, this vision, but I realize that people are not interested. So I can tell people that I want to set up maybe a psychological museum in Singapore. That will be the first psychological museum in Singapore with certain technology and such. They just, okay, okay. Either they do not believe me or they're just not interested. So down the road, I realized that there is no need to tell anybody of your vision. So personally, I have employed a few people as ad hoc freelancers for my company. However, I realized that the new generation is rather weak and disillusioned. They can't really do work. However, I am still optimistic that there will be good people that will come to me. <laughs> So there you have it. I hope that this episode has helped you to understand the ENTJ boss better. If you are going to have an ENTJ boss, be really very careful and be mentally prepared. They are not easy to work with at all. <laughs> okay, I hope that you have enjoyed this video as well. If you have not subscribed, do consider subscribing so that we can bring you more ENTJ and MBTI and psychology. Okay, I'm going to sign off now and I'll see you in my next episode. Goodbye!